So here we are once again in Affinity Photo. I'm going straight up to File, New. You can select anyone you like. I've got this one selected with the transparent background option unchecked. Click Create and that gives us our new canvas. Now um, my toolbar and my Layers Studio will not probably look the same as yours. That doesn't matter. You configure your layout the way you like it. I've got it the way uh, I'm used to. So if uh, everything doesn't quite correspond to what you're seeing on your machine, um, don't worry about that. OK, so straight away, I'd like you to consider going up here to Snapping and Enable snapping. That gives us lots of good stuff, guides and all sorts of help. If, on the other hand, you find the guides intrusive and they are confusing you, you simply go back up to snapping and you disable uh, snapping. Okay? Right, so uh, we need uh, an object to trace around with our pen tool and so I'm going over here and to the um, to the vector shapes and I'm going to select the Pi tool. I know that in advance. I'm going to drag out a Pi by holding Shift and there is our Pi. Now there's a couple of things that you might like to know here. You'll see that a couple of nodes have got red dots on them and that means they are adjustable. So if I scroll over a red dot I get that double headed arrow and that means I can move that if I wish. Same here, double-headed arrow, I can move that, something, something like that. Now we can't see the fill because it is white and it's on a white background. So let's go up here to fill and we'll make that red. Get rid of that box. And um, I want to duplicate that to make it uh, a little bit more challenging. So I could uh, press Command J to duplicate it, or I can go over here and right click on the uh, layer and I'll select duplicate there. I'm now going to go up to arrange and I'll flip that horizontally. Uh, with V for V tool, I'll move it across now, can you see our guides coming in to tell us when it's level and lined up? I'll move that across there uh, like that to make that object. And then I'm going to go back over to our Layer Studio. I'm going to shift click uh, to select both objects and I'm going to Command G to group them together. Now, why have I made this strange looking object? It's quite simply because it's got pointy bits and it's got curvy bits. And when we're using our pen tool uh, on a, a more practical uh, situation, we will be confronted with uh, straight lines, curved lines, pointy bits, curves. So that's why we're starting off with this. So now push P for pen tool and that gives us up here in the uh, contextual toolbar all manner of options and I don't really want you to concern yourself with any of these at this point with the exception of this little guy here which is called the rubber band tool and we'll click on that we'll leave all the rest so with our pen tool and the rubber band uh, tool selected, we're going to probably start about here, which is an obvious place to start. I'm going to put my finger on Alt and scroll forward to come in a bit closer. And I'm going to lay down the first node here by left clicking. And I get a square node with no handles. That's okay, that's what I want. Straight line and a pointy bit. So I'm gonna to go to here and I'm going to left click and again square node no handles but now we're moving down onto the curvy bits and that is uh, a game changer so now we left click hold that and drag a little bit so now we've got a circular node with two handles 
And this is our rubber band tool showing us where we're going next. I'm going to do that again down here. I'm going to left click and drag. Now we're going over here to a pointy bit. So I'm simply going to left click. I get a square node, no handles. Back onto curves. I'm going to left click and drag a little bit. Now I'm going to make a deliberate mistake and you'll understand why later on. I'm going to go straight up here now to a pointy bit and I'm going to left click. Another straight line, there's our rubber band tool. Another straight line and a pointy bit, left click, square node, no handles. Left click, pointy bit, you see. Um, square node, no handles. Back onto the curves, left click and drag round node, two handles, left click and drag, pointy bit, left click, curvy bit, left click and drag, left click and drag, pointy bit, left click. And now we're coming on the home straight to where we started out and I'm going to click that to close our curve. Now we're going to go round and adjust the nodes uh, to put them uh, where we want them. So that doesn't look too bad to me, but I, if I roll over it, you'll see that my, um, my pen cursor changes. And that means that if I now put my finger on Command, I've got that selected, I can move it and adjust it to uh, more accurately uh, go where I want. Same thing, finger on command to select that node. I see I've got two handles. And if I move the handles, they move simultaneously. And that is really what we want. We want to move one handle at a time. So how do we do that? It's very simple. You have, your, you have the index finger of your left hand on uh, command and then you put the middle finger of your left hand on Alt, and that will allow you to just select that handle, and the other one doesn't move. So now you come to this one also with your finger on Command and the other finger on Alt, and you move that handle. I think that's okay. Same thing down here. Now, Command, click to select, Alt, with command also selected and move just the one handle. Finger on command, other finger on alt, move just the one handle. That looks quite well placed, don't have to worry about that. Now, command to select it, alt to move just the one handle, now we're coming up to the place where we had our deliberate mistake. If I roll my mouse over this line, nothing much happens. In fact, nothing happens. If I put my finger on command, I get a tilde, a little mark that shows me uh, that if I now click, I can add a node. And I'm going to drag that node down to where we want it. That looks quite nice, doesn't it, that one? I'm going to now, with my finger still on command and my other finger on Alt, move that one and carry on round our work. That looks as though it could move a little bit. Finger on command, put that there perhaps. Up to this one, uh, finger on command to select it. Nothing much happening there. Let's go up to this one, finger on command to select. Alt to finger on command and Alt to just move that handle. I'm sorry to say the same thing a thousand times, but it, it sort of drums it in uh, how, you, how you do it. With these simple moves, you will be flying solo with the pen tool in no time at all. Command select, Alt, move that handle on its own. That looks pretty good to me. Command to select move it to where we want it. Might have to adjust that handle a little bit more. Over here, finger on command, select, Alt, move that handle. 
Command Alt, move that handle. Uh, that looks okay. Command Alt, move that handle. Is that going to behave or not? Yeah, it doesn't look too bad, does it? That's okay. That's okay. Right now, we've got our curve adjusted, and we're basically quite happy with that. So we move up here to the top left hand corner and we click selection. That turns our curve into a selection of moving ants. Let's go down here to the uh, layers studio and select add pixel layer. And the best way to fill a selection quickly rather than with your paintbrush painted all in is to go to the uh, flood fill tool here, it's a paint bucket look, select that, oh, before we do, well, we, we can either, but we want to change our color to black, we don't want another selection of red, do we? So we've changed our color to black, we've got the paint bucket selected, we go over the selection and just left click and drag once, and that fills our selection with black. We uh, push V for the move tool uh, to get rid of the paint bucket tool and then we push command D to deselect the marching ants and there is our masterpiece. If we go to the uh, red and click it off we can see and I'll scroll out a little bit alt and push away with my mouse <clears throat> you can see uh, our work. Uh, it's not too bad because I was hurrying along, obviously, because the video would roll on and on and on. Otherwise, we could have spent possibly a little more time adjusting the handles and the nodes, but that's a result. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that video and that if you found it helpful, you will consider subscribing to this channel. You might even give me a like or leave a comment below or all of the above. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.